Being spiritual has nothing to do with what you believe and everything to do with your state of consciousness. What's good my fellow peasants, how you're doing? So in this video I'm going to discuss a topic I find hugely interesting, a theory of sorts, but one that I feel was represented somewhat subtly in Final Fantasy VII the original but I think is definitely there and I really hope to see more in the remake and that is that Cloud Strife experiences a spiritual awakening in the game. Now I know that that statement is probably going to fire a lot of preconceived notions in people's minds. Holy hell, Pez has gone hippie. Spiritual awakening, don't you mean just ego inflation of people who think that they're superior? Before any of those settle in your mind, I just want to explain how these themes are represented in FF7 and how they go remarkably hand in hand with what each of us as individual beings to some extent we experience in our own inner worlds and I'm going to make this a two-parter just because I want to keep the time down and there's two main camps I want to go into with this discussion but ultimately what this video is going to talk about on a deeper level is just how far Cloud's character arc goes and how it actually might be one of the most inspiring thought out insights into a character that we've ever seen and that all of us can do huge service to ourselves in applying the same kind of thinking to ourselves and while of course Final Fantasy 7 is a high fantasy game and you no know, they go far more literal with some of the way it represents its stuff for example Genova I strongly believe that Genova is representing a deeper concept of the ego or, or the illusion of self that Sephiroth also pushes into cloud he actually has invaders in his mind no, telling him he's weak, telling him he's worthless, that he's a puppet, and this is so much like the ego construct. The unhelpful, gnawing little voices that we all have that you know, act almost like a parasite that Genova does, absorbing our life energy, keeping us identified with the lowest form of thought patterns we can have about ourselves, and also stopping us recognizing our true selves. You know, I love the quote of identity is fundamentally an illusion. It's an evolutionary overhang, which lets us function as coherent, self-aware animals. But on a deep level, we have no real evidence that when we wake up, we're the same person who went to sleep. I just want to say again that while the term awakening or, or spiritual awakening, that seems something more akin to a person who would sit in a cave eating beans and lentils than a spiky haired badass who can hurl a ludicrously large hunk of steel. <laughs> but Cloud Strife, he is a character who is so much more than that. I, and I often think we forget this and maybe that's because of things like Advent Children, the way Cloud was portrayed in that. But I do think that we forget that in the original Cloud is a very complex character whose primary struggle throughout is one of identity. In fact, it's almost entirely that, from the infiltration of his mind, constantly being invaded by Genova and Sephiroth, to then even the delusion that Cloud believes he is Zack. Like an actual whole other person, someone he wished he was. And we actually have parts of the game presenting Cloud in places of Zack where he never actually was. And it goes so convincing, it goes so real in Cloud's world of seeing himself as Zack, that it would almost entirely support what a lot of Western philosophers have said, that what you believe in your mind can actually become your truth. You know, Kurt Vonnegut was one who said, we are what we pretend to be. Or even perhaps Rene Descartes who said, I think, therefore I am. And while two of these quotes, you could really see the logic in it, because that's just how powerful the mind can be, what I believe is that any person who is on a path of self-realization, they will also recognize the inherent mistruth in these statements. I would argue there is something inherently wrong in these statements that both of these philosophers missed, and that is that just because Cloud believes for the longest time that he is this strong, successful, high-ranking soldier who manages great accomplishments, I would argue that though he may think that on the inside, the real cloud beneath that delusion is never truly able to accept the lie. Because I do believe that each of us are intuitive, instinctive beings who only resonate at the truest qualities of self-peace and joy and authenticity when we know we're being who we really are. And I would argue cloud never accomplishments uh, accomplishes this because it creates a fracture 
in Cloud that we see emerge repeatedly. I and mean, whether that's Cloud's self-doubt, his narcissistic attitude at the start, he's a real douchebag, or just the confusion he expresses on things. That makes the cloud we know for the largest part of the game a very sad, disconnected cloud. And it's because cloud is an illusion, as many of us are. We are all built up over a combination of false memories and desires of who we wished we were, just like cloud. And what we see with him is remarkably I'd say scarily realistic to real life, to all of us, because even scientists now are concluding that what we think, guys, like our actual memories that we remember about ourselves, our childhoods, our most treasured, prized days and significant moments of our lives, that actually most of them are fake. And there's been loads of studies on this, um, and some of them have gone scarily up to over 40%. 40% of some types of our memory, and those are things like what happened in a movie or a story recently or the recent events of things, even that could be up to 40% inaccurate. But there can even be, for the broader scale of our life and for those deeper kind of memories of, I don't know, when we were teens or in school, even the day our kids were born, they're saying, that some of those kind of memories can be up to 84% inaccurate. Whoa! And there's actually been a name for this. One theory named it the fuzzy trace theory. And just to read you a statement uh, from this theory, it says, uh, it's a really powerful psychological phenomenon. It's a reality mismatch. It's not I can't remember, which is forgetting, but I remember vividly something that didn't happen. And I really love how deep this theme, which has a lot of grounding in truth, goes in FF7. And that the remake could, not even just with Cloud, but even other characters, they rip misremember scenes. Um, a great one that I can pull off the top of my head was, for example, Tifa. She totally misremembered that she didn't even hang out with Cloud as kids, that she kind of pied him off to be with other kids, and she didn't remember that. She, she actually thought that she was kind to Cloud and that they hung out, but it wasn't true. And that was an event that actually traumatized Cloud at a young age. It, it was somewhat that and being blamed for putting Tifa in a coma as kids that really traumatized and create Cloud's first fracture. And we see him change as a child because of this. And, and I love this because these kind of traumatic events, they are true with each of us that what fracture us as individuals now can often go that deep into childhood and that a true spiritual awakening, it isn't some fantasy that one tries to trick themselves with. You know, it's not something that's supposed to inflate your ego, though some will use it that way and just simply spend their life adding to their ego because the whole purpose of it is about the dissolution of the ego through identifying what cause these fractures. That's really it's all, all it's about and that the mechanisms we created to either defend ourselves or accept something we couldn't you know so long ago when we were kids or uh, the earlier parts of our life that we now think this is who we are. We create belief structures in our response to these kind of events in our lives that if go unchecked or unnoticed or without awareness brought to them, do now become our reality. And in the case of Cloud, he became closed off as a child, angry. He called the other kids idiots and set himself into this lone wolf outcast kind of role. He, he played himself into it and believed that this was a part of who he was. And this whole scene where we see Cloud actually piecing himself together and this is such a deep scene. Um, he goes down with Tifa and he's there trying to piece himself to remember who he is. And this, I feel, profoundly resembles what we must each do to slowly become whole again. That is, all reach the point of understanding that there is and never was anything broken in the first place. We pass through life consciously and unconsciously adopting new masks and personas for the journey to help us along. And Cloud is no different in that. Whether it's from the angry outcast boy, the teenager aspiring to be the hero, or the shy young adult with no voice to the jaded cynical man who hides all his emotions. But then look how he transitions to simply the individual who people can rely on. He actually discovers somewhat who he really is and I'm sure we've all worn or continue to wear a few of these kind of guises and we've all had these personality changes in our life because coming to recognize and shed these masks and personas i feel is one of the deepest themes i hope 
that the remake can reimagine for people in a way that can reach out to every human soul that just as an illusion and the ones that cloud faces of his identity so are we and ancient vedic literature that i absolutely love they call this maya and maya connotes a magic show an illusion where things appear to be present but are not what they seem that which exists but is constantly changing and thus is spiritually unreal now that may seem scary and it is in fact it's one of the most terrifying yet meaningful things anyone can do to bravely see who we really are just as it is for cloud i mean look how scared he, he believes he is weak pathetic insignificant that's who he believes he is so he has to hold on to the lie that he was a first class soldier because without it then what does he have left in cloud's mind absolutely nothing and this is what causes the pain of him letting it go because that's the nature of the ego of maya it's that it wants you to believe that you are those things that you aren't capable of incredible strength boundless courage and the compassion of a leader it doesn't want you to because otherwise it would die it would have nothing to cling to and just like Genova and sephiroth i feel they are the ego because they do try a part of the power and influence and control that they keep over cloud is entirely dependent on cloud not realizing who he really is and if anyone is interested in this kind of subject uh, i'm actually going to share a video now this video is very hard to conceptualize uh, it, it might be a bit of a mind blow for you but i want to leave a link to this documentary on samadhi now for anyone who is interested i watched it over a year ago now and i've watched it probably about five six times since and it truly helped change my life and yeah i just really can't recommend it enough but Jumping back into with FF7, because I was wondering, you know, am I just now seeing Cloud Store in a whole different light because of this journey I've been on this year? No, am I projecting my own spiritual fascination I have onto Cloud and in this video? Well, maybe, but also maybe not, because I don't see it as any coincidence that in this tale of a character traversing multiple personas of his life, embarking on this grand quest along which he slowly unravels who he is. And as he does this, he goes from being an emotionally stunted victim to someone who gradually more and more grows into a compassionate leader type figure, a hero. Throughout we see what I can strongly identify as part of the inner work process. It's not an easy process for anyone who has done it, to any kind of degree because just like when Cloud starts saying he can't figure out who he is that he is muddled uh, even says things like he never lived up to being Cloud these kind of identity identity crises they are common I'd really love to know in the comment section below oh, you don't have to go into too much depth if anyone has had these but I think most people have confronted it at some point in their life that it's natural that first we battle our egos and sometimes we have real triumphs and victories and breakthroughs realizations about ourselves we have a win just to find ourselves giving to them once again handing them exactly what it wants what the ego wants and even when we do identify these things in ourselves that we were previously blind to that are we now know are false how often does it just seem easier to play along with that falsehood to keep wearing that mask that has always served and protected us before and we're so efficient at using it that we find ourselves almost using them by default and once again disconnecting from our authenticity and it's just like listening to millions of voices that we have inside our head each of those voices being something that was formed in our minds from a past agreement we made from a previous response and this dream this creates a network of dreams according to Toltec wisdom uh, a really cool ancient philosophy and they called this dream that can either be akin to essentially heaven or hell and which one we place ourselves in they call it mitote and cloud spends the best part of the majority in fact of the original game deeply in mitote in also again maya and how he frees himself is something i'm gonna cover on part two so go check out part two as we finish exactly how cloud then frees himself at this illusion um what mitote is and why i think cloud could have an amazing arc in the remake i'll see you over there guys